Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade exponential, complex exponential equation. So we have 2 minus i to the power x equals 3 minus 4i. And we're going to be solving for the x values. Now, you might come up with some quick solutions, but we're interested in finding all the solutions. So what am I talking about? We have a complex number in the form a plus bi, and then we raise it to the power x, and then we find 3 minus 4i, another complex number. Obviously, this makes sense. Now, here's a million dollar question. Does x have to be an integer? And the answer is, we'll find out. All right, first of all, I want you to observe one thing. If you take 2 minus i and raise it to the second power, by using the formula for a minus b squared, you're going to get 2 squared minus 4i plus i squared. By definition, i squared equals negative 1. It, if you're going to remember one thing about complex number, this should be it. Because this is actually going to help you a lot, right? That's pretty much all you need. So i squared is negative 1, and from here we get 4 minus 1, which is 3 minus 4i. Uh-oh, we got the right-hand side. Is that a surprise? No, because this problem has been made that way, so that it would work. If instead of 3 minus 4i, you had another complex number like 3 plus 4i, or even something, you know, f like 5 plus 8i, or 1 half plus root 3i, obviously the x would be very different. But in this case, I wanted to kind of build a relationship between the uh, the base on the left-hand side and the answer on the right-hand side so that we could come up with some quick and easy solutions. All right, so what does this mean? This means I can replace 3 minus 4i with 2 minus i squared. So here we can rewrite the equation as 2 minus i to the power x equals 2 minus i to the power 2. And by doing like a one-to-one -one correspondence, we can safely say that x equals 2 is a solution. I'm not necessarily saying that is the only solution. We'll kind of explore it a little bit. But from here, we can safely say that x equals 2 works, right? Because when the bases are equal, then the exponents can also be equal. Obviously, there are exceptions, exceptions to this, like if the base is 1, then it doesn't matter what the exponent is because they're always equal. If the base is negative 1, then you have to think about even and odd powers of the base and so on and so forth. Or the, if, the, if the exponent is 0, again, uh, the base doesn't matter this time and the answer will be 1 uh, as long as the base is not 0. Make sense? So there are some special cases, but since the bases are complex numbers and they are equal, I mean, it makes sense, right? If x is equal to 2, we're going to get an equality. Okay, great, but here's the, another million dollar question. Is that the only solution? Let's see. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to use this equation as our equation because obviously it's much, much better than the original one, right? Don't you... Uh-oh, where's my... Okay, so this equation will be used, and we're going to be using uh, the uh, polar forms. But to be able to write a number in polar form, we kind of have to graph it first to understand what is going on. 2 minus i is kind of like 2 units on the x-axis and 1 unit on the negative y-axis. So it's kind of like down 1 unit. It's kind of like a 2 comma negative 1. It's equivalent to basically the point... Uh, on the coordinate plane, which is given by 2 comma negative 1. So this is our real part, this is our imaginary part, so on and so forth. Obviously, there is a segment that connects it to the origin, and that length, the length of that segment, is called r, or the modulus, or the absolute value of our number z. And z, in this case, would be 2 minus i, not its powers. Okay? Make sense? And obviously, from Pythagorean theorem, you can easily find r. The absolute value of z would be super duper easy to find. Square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared, and that would be root 5. But what about the angle, right? We do need two things, because any complex number can be written as 
r times e to the power i times theta, where theta is the angle that our segment makes with the x-axis, with the positive x-axis. So we're going to have to start here. So let's go ahead and try to use a different color. Not so different, but anyways, it's yellow. So we're, we're talking about, I messed up, by the way. I should start there. I should start here and cover this angle all the way up here. Make sense? That is my theta. And obviously, theta is greater than 270 degrees, which is 3 pi over 2, right, in radians. What is that supposed to mean? Well, first of all, it means we are in the fourth quadrant. Duh. I mean, you probably knew that, right? But our angle is going to have a tangent that is negative, right, in the fourth quadrant. Okay, let's see. What is tangent theta? Tangent theta is going to be y over x. That's going to be negative 1 half. So theta can be defined as 10 inverse of negative 1 half. And if you put it through Desmos or any other calculator, you're going to get something like negative 26 degrees. Okay. And you can add 360 to find the positive angle. So under these conditions, let's go ahead and find out what x is. So let's go ahead and write our number. So on the left-hand side, again, we have 2 minus i to the x equals 2 minus i squared. Again, x equals 2 is an obvious solution, but we're looking for other solutions. We're after something more interesting. I wouldn't say complex or complicated. Not trying to play uh, with words here. But anyways, so the modulus is root 5, and inside I do need e to the power i theta. The theta is defined as 10 inverse of negative 1 half, whatever that is, okay? So, on the right-hand side, though, since we have an x as an exponent, we don't have to worry about all the uh, branches. Uh, we can just keep one because x is going to take care of that. But on the right-hand side, since that's kind of numerical and there can be infinitely many values, we kind of have to cover all of them. So, for this one, I'm going to write e to the power, root 5, of course, uh, root 5 times e to the power i times theta plus 2 and pi. I do need to add multiples of 2 pi so I can cover all the rotations, all the branches. Make sense? And then this will be raised to the second power. The rest is fairly easy because all you have to do is ln or natural log both sides. So we can kind of go ahead and do this. Move this guy over a little bit to the right so we can kind of insert the ln there easily. Just go ahead and insert an ln there, the natural log here, and a natural log here. And now we're going to get the following. Because you can move the x to the front, bring it down, x ln root 5 times e to the i theta equals 2 times ln root 5 times e to the power i times theta plus 2 n pi. All right, hopefully, so far so good. Now we're going to distribute it. ln of a product, as you know, is the sum of the ln, so it's going to be like this. x times ln root 5 plus ln e to the i theta equals 2 times ln root 5 plus ln e to the power i times theta plus 2n pi. Okay. Now, we want to find x, so let's go ahead and divide both sides by the thing. But also, at the same time, recognize that this is uh, ln e to the power something is that thing. So, this is actually going to be, so we're going to get the following. Let me go ahead and simplify as I go. This can be written as the exponent because ln e is 1. So it's going to be i times theta plus 2 n pi. I hope you don't mind. I use double parentheses. You could also use brackets if you want. And then we're going to divide it by this. And of course, this is going to be i theta. Now I just want to distribute this because it looks better that way. 2 ln root 5. Don't worry about the root 5. You can leave it like that. And then i times, of course, there's a 2 here, 2 theta plus 2 n pi. And then at the bottom, we have ln root 5 plus i theta. Now, here's a special value. If n is equal to 0, yay, that's going to be awesome. If n is 0, we're going to get rid of the 2n pi. So x is going to be 2 ln root 5 plus 2i theta divided by ln root 5 plus i theta. But guess what? If you take out a 2, factor out the 2, that should be an i theta and ln root 5 plus i theta is going to cancel out, leaving us with the 2, which is the very first solution that we found. But this is the general solution, and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. 
Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Actually, that's not what I meant. Let me go ahead and fix it real quick. So this is going to be our general solution. So you can replace n with infinitely many values, and you're going to get an answer every time. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.